Uh, so I'm the CEO of Fast Forward Technologies. Um, and Fast Forward seeks to invest in early stage investment opportunities. The best performing asset class in the last 20 years, and frankly in the history of humanity, has been early stage technology. And Jim has a term, he calls it the Silicon Valley Mafia. But I will <clears throat> soften it a little bit by telling you that there's a cartel of uh, Silicon Valley venture funds, it's about eight to 10 of them, that effectively dominate this space entirely. Um, it's virtually impossible to invest in the most opportune uh, early stage technology opportunities. Um, and frankly, it, those opportunities have been hoarded by uh, billionaires and, as Jim says, the, the Silicon Valley uh, elite. Um, fast forward is uh, the opportunity that, that allows all of us to invest in early stage technology opportunities. <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's the best asset class in the history uh, of investing. Uh, and we, um, we invest in those uh, businesses with four or five very distinguishable differences from those venture firms that you can't even get into. First of all, the venture firms charge what's known as a two and 20 fee. Um, they've actually increased them now to some of them. I just I learned of one that was a three and a half and 35. And that means that they are taking a 3% management fee so if there's $100 million invested, they take $3 million management fee, and they take 35% of the carry. We take no management fee, and we take n none of the carry. So our investment returns are perfectly aligned with our shareholders. Um, <clears throat> venture funds are also not liquid. Um, what does that mean? That the funds, when you invest in the funds, they're usually eight years long with options to roll them for another couple of years. So if you put money in, you get to get your money out 10 years later. As a publicly quoted company, our stock is entirely liquid. You can buy a share today <clears throat> and sh sell a share tomorrow. There's also another uh, few distinguishable facts about fast forward versus other venture firms. The first is that for the most part, we're investing our own money. Um, uh, I'm, I'm the largest shareholder in, uh, of fast forward and there's six of us, uh, Jim being one of them, uh, who have uh, put in almost all of the capital of Fast Forward. So if you think about that, if you think about how a venture capitalist invests, typically, even if it's a not, a, not a conscious bias, if you're investing somebody else's money, your bias is, is towards the upside and not mindful of the downside because you uh, don't stand to lose your own money. <clears throat> so Fast Forward represents a unique investment opportunity uh, to, to play in a space that has been as I mentioned, hoarded by uh, a very, very small number of Silicon Valley uh, venture firms. I want to talk a little bit about um, the history of uh, technology and how we got to where we are today. I truly believe that um, every single market is up for grabs and every industry will be disrupted. And I truly believe that the GDP of every industry will ultimately be captured by uh, those uh, industrialists and innovators, um, many of whom you've yet to, to learn of. <clears throat> Let's talk about the phone. Um, just, you know, 30 years ago, or we all remember how the phone was a rotary phone and you had to call the operator to make a phone call. And um, if you think of what our phones can do now, I won't b bother you with the details about the phone having more power than uh, all the entire NASA capability that put man on the moon in 1969. Um, the, the smartphone has 23 sensors in it. It knows where you are. It knows virtually, it knows more about you than you know about you. And one of the things that I think is driving this innovation and, and this disruption is that smartphones can do uh, what feature phones uh, no longer, what feature phones couldn't do three years ago. Just, just quickly, um, I mentioned the phone has 23 sensors on it. Let's talk about the camera. Um, and let's talk about the camera as it relates to disrupting industries. Remember a small little company called Kodak? Well, Kodak, I'm on the wrong slide, there you go. Uh, Kodak in 1976 was a $26 billion, sorry, in 1996 was a $26 billion industry. In 2000, uh, company, in 2006, it was still an $8 billion industry, it, it company. Today it's bankrupt. 
And today, 80% of the world's photographs are taken and consumed by one company, Facebook. Facebook being Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So if you don't think disruption can happen, if you don't think it can happen uh, in the phone, just have a think about Kodak. And the, 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 fo the, the camera in your phone is one billion times more powerful than a camera was back in, in, uh, in 1975. Um, I'm not going to talk about the 23 different things in your phone, but I will talk about um, a few of them. Talk about a, a, the GPS. Uh, the GPS used to weigh uh, 53 pounds and have the bargain price of $120,000. Now the GPS in your phone can be bought for uh, two quid and weighs less than three grams. Another feature in your phone is the accelerometer or the gyroscope. Um, this was widely credited uh, for helping the United States win the Cold War. ICBMs were part of the innovation that, intercontinental ballistic missiles were part of the innovation that helped the United States win the Cold War. Um, the ICBM of the 1960s cost millions and millions of dollars and weighed hundreds of pounds. Today, you have better technology in your phone, an accelerometer and a gyroscope. Oops. Um, and uh, they cost uh, less than, than $3 and less than $1. And I'm going to talk about their applicability a little bit later. <clears throat> our phones are now medical devices. Um, not only is our phone a, um, an, an ultrasound, uh, our phone is also, can also give you a, a hospital-grade EKG. I actually have that experience personally. I went to the cardiologist and was a little worried about some things and, and had a checkup, and, and he said, I'm fine. And um, I said, well, when should I come back for my next EKG? And he said, I can give you better than a hospital-grade EKG on your phone, and it's $50. And he said, and not only is it better on your phone, I can't replicate your symptoms even if I check you into the hospital for, for 100 days. So for $50, my son is currently holding my phone, but I could show you on the back of my phone, I have sensors where you can record an EKG, provide a voiceover of exactly what I'm feeling, and send it to my doctor in real time. An EKG, hospital grade, better than your hospital can provide. We are at, also at Fast Forward looking at all sorts of different things that you wouldn't think that the phone would have any relevance for. Uh, we've been looking at, at uh, investing in a company that focuses on depression. Depression is an enormous issue. Um, it affects about 7% of global GDP. Global GDP, depending on whose numbers you use, is, is roughly 86 trillion, so you could argue it's 5.6 trillion. Um, this um, uh, technology allows uh, the phone, you use immunofluorescent markers to detect whether or not you're experiencing elements of depression. It, it can measure the cadence in your voice when you're depressed or when you're having certain symptoms of depression, you talk slower or more rapidly. It measures the speed of your typing, et cetera. It's really quite a remarkable thing. And if you think about any of the markets that I just mentioned, you can think about how impactful um, just your phone and the technology in your phone will be. I could probably speak for hours about every single market here, but I've picked a few to talk about that I think are interesting uh, data points on, on disruption and what we've seen. Autonomous vehicles. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been in an autonomous vehicle, but, but I have, and it's absolutely remarkable. And if you actually think about what autonomous cars will do for the disabled, for the elderly, for the blind, it's actually remarkable. I have a, a good friend who is, she'd be the highest ranking female at Google, and she said to me, how old are your boys? And I said, I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. And she said, they'll never drive. And I said, what do you mean they'll never drive? She said, they'll never drive. I said, well, why would, on earth would they never drive? And that was the night before I got to go into the autonomous vehicle, because the technology is here it's considerably safer. And when you think about the decision matrix, hopefully my son's buying his own car at 16, but assuming I'm buying his car for him at 16, 
I can't imagine a world where I would ever buy him a car that he can control versus a car that pinpoint perfect geography can control. And if you haven't been in an autonomous vehicle, it is one of the most comforting, repeat, comforting, not discomforting, uh, uh, experiences you can have. Um, I, I, and, and when I've spoken with older people, significantly older people, they told me that it's not dissimilar to how they first thought the elevator might feel and how comforted you are and how they first thought that, that planes might feel. Uh, some other uh, spaces that are experiencing enormous disruption, communication. Um, the telcos recently, there was a, an article recently in the Wall Street Journal, and the telcos said that they lost $360 billion in revenue last year to Skype phone calls, WhatsApp, and other related Wi-Fi phone calls. Imagine that, $360 billion. Energy. Um, I don't want to uh, rain on my predecessor's uh, presentation, but um, fracking, <clears throat> I, live in, I live in Texas, and, and if you speak to a lot of people about fracking, the thing they're most concerned with is advanced so solar voltaics. And advanced solar voltaics, while not a disruption for the immediate term, um, ultimately, there's 1,400 times the amount of, of power generated by the sun for the Earth daily. Advanced solar voltaics is about 10 to 15 years away, but it basically makes energy free. And if you don't believe it, the California government just did a 30-year contract with an advanced solar voltaics firm. And um, if you think about free energy, and Jim talked about some social issues, and I'm not, I'm not gonna talk in great detail about social issues, but if you think about free energy, think about one of the world's biggest problems, which is, which is clean water. Um, we have lots of water, just look at the ocean. The reason we don't have clean water and potable water and drinkable water is because energy is unbelievably expensive and cleaning that water and making it drinkable water is, is prohibitively expensive. That, will, that too will be disrupted. Uh, <clears throat> finance, um, Jim talked a little bit about this this morning. Uh, I think um, one of the reasons the banks are down 25% is what Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, said in his annual letter to shareholders uh, just this year, Silicon Valley is coming with money and with brains. FinTech is very real. It allows uh, you to make an, an, uh, an, a more informed decision about a loan and uh, almost everything involved with banking uh, is, is something that, that is really disruptive. Uh, <clears throat> education, if there's a sector that we're incredibly focused on, and I talk a little bit later about at, at Fast Forward, it's education. Education is the second largest market in the world. Uh, almost every disruption in education has led to enormous rewards for the disruptor, and it's really uh, undergoing enormous change. Um, let me look what else I have there, healthcare and agriculture. <clears throat> um, Healthcare, uh, as I mentioned before, your phones are becoming uh, your doctors, um, and in many ways, we're becoming the software. And agriculture um, is really actually quite, I've, I've looked at some interesting agriculture technology businesses. One is a, a, dro is a robot um, that, that effectively harvests, harvests everything from poinsettias to potatoes and the yield is significantly greater than human beings. So you can certainly see a world where the agriculture business is one where pesticides are sprayed by drones and crops are yielded by robots. Speaking of robots, if you're in the parking lot of Stanford University in just outside of San Francisco in Palo Alto, and you're lingering around a car far too long, you'll see the robots that they have as security guards. One of them is up there right in the middle. <clears throat> now, while it can't arrest you or shoot you, it can certainly come up to you using data sensors and take pictures of you and at a minimum startle a, a, uh, a potential uh, car thief. <clears throat> There's also a restaurant in San Francisco that I didn't take a picture of, but I was able to find a similar picture online with uh, robots as waiters. Um, make no mistake about it, folks. Robots will be serving your food, and robots will be doing virtually everything. And this is a picture of um, a class around my boy's age, 
And guess who's making them? Guys who are seven years old. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the sectors that we're focused on at, uh, at Fast Forward. <clears throat> and the one that, that is a very uh, interesting, exciting sector that we have two investments in is in the education technology space. Um, the rising, I think the slides are moving around, there we are. The, the rising demand for uh, quality education is effectively a global mega trend. Um, you, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who didn't believe that getting a better education for their family or their children wasn't an, a noble uh, objective. Um, however, education has been prohibitively expensive. Every part of education has been prohibitively expensive. Startups in the ed tech sector um, have identified massive disruption uh, to date and growth in the sector is effectively fueled by a shortage of global skilled workers, uh, a rapidly growing middle class, and um, the uh, emerging um, techno, techno class in uh, emerging countries. Um, the information is digital. There's really no uh, re footprint barrier to getting a great education anymore. <clears throat> and we're investors in two businesses that we're extremely excited about. So, uh, Vimo is a, is a business that Fast Forward owns about 15% of. There has been no disruption in the student lending space for about 40 years. And the student debt crisis is an enormous one in the United States. The student debt crisis is at $1.3 trillion. To give you an idea of its size and scale, that is the second largest credit market on earth behind the US mortgage market, $1.3 trillion. 38 million Americans have student debt, and the student debt uh, landscape and the student funding landscape hasn't had a disruption in 40 years. Uh, Vimo is, is an early stage company doing really great things, um, and, and, and frankly, um, really well poised to, to, uh, to capture a large part of the of the student debt market. Another business that we're an investor in is a, is a student app called Schooled. Uh, Schooled is, is quite simply um, an amazing uh, app that helps children, college uh, students and their parents help navigate the uh, decision around entering college. We launched this app about 40 days ago it already has 700,000 installs, has been the number one app uh, in education on the Google Play Store and in the uh, app, Apple Store. And if you actually think about this, um, almost every big ticket item around everything, whether it's buying a car or buying a home, buying a home is Zillow, has an app for it. The biggest purchase that a, a, a person can make around that age is a student loan and their education. Schooled is the first of its kind. Um, its, its adoption and installs have been um, phenomenal. And um, we are also, I think, very poised to, to grow that business and, and uh, capture an enormous market. So as I mentioned before, Fast Forward's a, uh, a lead investor in Schooled. Um, it is, uh, if, you, if you look at a lot of the metrics around apps, uh, it, it really is, is um, had just, bit, just got off to a tremendous start and, and expect to hear more from it shortly. I think my time is, is slowly coming to an end, so I will, uh, I will end by saying that um, <clears throat> we're also um, big, big believers in, in disruption in, in banking. We have a couple investments in the fintech sector. Uh, one is a tremendous business here called Satoshi Pay. Um, they have a, a booth back there. I would highly encourage you to go visit it. It's run by, and there's a CEO right over there, uh, run by a very innovative uh, entrepreneur uh, who's doing great things. And we're, we're incredibly proud uh, of, of his, his business and our investment in it. Um, we are, um, he's, he's really focused on using the blockchain technology uh, for micropayments. And he's done a tremendous job and experiencing great growth. Um, uh, 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 there will be enormous disruptions to banking. 
Um, and um, uh, fast forward is, is keenly aware of those and looking at, at a lot of early stage companies in the space. Well, I'm going to conclude by telling you that, that gaming is the, uh, f the last sector that, that uh, fast forward invests in. We currently have one investment in the, in the emerging uh, gaming space, and that's Leap. We own 41% of that business. Um, we think that there are, are great opportunities in the gaming space. We think we're a team that's very well poised to capture the gaming space. Of the six largest investors that I mentioned before, two of them are noteworthy in gaming. Uh, our special advisor and our third largest shareholder is Norbert Teufelberger, who was the, uh, Pat was the founder and the CEO of BWIN for, uh, for 17 years, as well as Gigi Levy, who was the CEO of 888 and uh, is on the Facebook advisory board and on the Bertelsmann board. Um, they're large investors in our business, also very active shareholders, and we think that there'll be great opportunities in, in gaming. So, uh, again, I want to thank everybody for coming here today and listening to uh, all of the presentations and to uh, my presentation. And uh, we are very excited about disruption and fast forward. Uh, is very focused on investing in early stage technology companies that are disrupting large industries. Thank you.